welcome to the most must-hear podcast in all the land. Welcome to the Broad Culture Podcast. Now to hand over to the host with the most, Mr. John Reed. What's up, guys? John here. So, we got ourselves a, a trio here. We got myself. We got our the wonderful man that just did our the intro, Spencer Nicholas. Howdy, y'all. And we got ourselves the redheaded right stepchild of the bunch, Dash Ireland. How you doing? We're doing fine. I'm Y'all can't see this, but he has a Enzo Amore microphone. So, yeah. And he won't. He won't stop. He won't stop bugging us with his Enzo impression, which is horrible. How you doing? Listen, I've met the man. You do no justice. Like I give a crap. I bought this microphone, and I'm allowed to do what I want with it. How much did it cost you? I don't know, and I don't care. Fair enough. So, for this uh, episode of the Broad Culture Podcast, we're going to start off with Spencer, who's going to give us a sports update and some stuff that he's going to talk about and related to the sports. Then we're going to move into Connor, who's going to talk about some TV aspects. Then we're going to go into some wrestling news. So, Spencer, take it away with your first topic. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, it is October, which means it's football season, but also at the same time, it's baseball. Well, besides that, baseball is winding down. Uh, now we have ourselves the uh, playoff bracket, um, which actually will be a part of a uh, prediction series that we, that I myself will be filming in the uh, upcoming days. Anyways, the teams that I made, the teams that have managed to punch their ticket into the playoffs are as follows. The Boston Red Sox, the New York Yankees, the Oakland Athletics, the Cleveland Indians, the Houston Astros, the Los Angeles Dodgers, the Atlanta Braves, the Colorado Rockies, the Chicago Cubs, and the Milwaukee Brewers. So, who do I think is going to win the entire thing? I think, well, before we get into that, I think the matchup for the World Series will be Chicago and Houston, with Chicago coming out on top. But they also wanted me to do prediction videos for the 2019 Stanley Cup, Super Bowl 53, and the 2019 NBA Finals, which I haven't gotten to uh, do yet, but the rest of those videos will be coming up in the next couple of days. Um, With that, I'll actually ask any viewers to uh, leave their thoughts in the comments. I'll probably ask these guys on uh, our messaging group who they think would get in, and so on and so forth. Also, the uh, university we attend is actually having a football game this Friday instead of a Saturday, which feels kind of weird. But I will be there, and I will make sure to give everyone an update on how that goes. Very quick segment for me because my phone is starting to die. But regardless, I wanted to get my supporters. That's you all. Come in. The floor is now yours. Daesh. Any whichever you want to go by. Daesh. Do you, how do what is up with the TV market? What do you mean TV market? You want to talk about TV shows, so. Well, TV shows, movies, and some music stuff. Yeah, because I'm watching American Dad right now. (laughs) Anyways, uh, when it comes to TV, October 5th, Big Mouth Season 2 comes out, and I am hyped. Because ever since I first got Netflix last year, I know I was kind of behind, and I was kind of mooching off of people. Um, I watched the show, and I loved it, and I've been waiting on Season 2 for over a year and that's great um venom is also coming out to theaters on october 5th uh from er- early reactions that it's kind of a lukewarm film it's not going to be horrible but it's also not going to be the best considering it's pg-13 
I which think which movie? People are thinking that if it were rated R, it would be great. Are you talking about Venom? Yeah, I I read up on some early reviews. How? Cause there's that embargo that's on in the reviews. Just stuff I read on the internet. Yeah. But evidently, don't believe Tom everything Hardy, you read. Because there's Sony has put an embargo on any reviews that they will be, they will face uh, legal actions if they review it. Oh well. Um, when it comes to music. Oh no! Wait, 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 wait. I got this is movie related. I want y'all's thoughts on this. They are re-releasing Deadpool two. As a PG-13. Thoughts, if that is a good idea or a bad idea. Uh, before, oh, wait, 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 wait. Before, before, D Disney has complete control, but has a say in Fox now. What, what they say, Fox is more than likely going to do since they technically, they don't technically own them, but they technically own them at, at this point in time. So, Many people are thinking that Disney says, "Let's test the water to see if it will, if it does good as a PG-13 movie, and maybe so that Deadpool can be part of the MCU as a main as a main franchise, not as a sub franchise that is not not um, rated R." So, before we continue, Ooh, I need your all's opinion. This has been sponsored by our new owners, the Walt Disney Company. Oh. Because they're taking over. Hail Hell our overlords. We love you, Walt. Hell, Hail this the day. overlord. Hail to the mask. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay, so, so I hear. Uh, so, Mickey, from what you say, is that Minnie has been acting really silly. I, I never said that. I said she was fucking goofy. <laughs> okay, so thoughts, that. thoughts. Yeah, um, stay on topic. Why? Why on earth are, are they doing that to our buddy Wade Wilson? Well, they he is. He's about the money. Th that, called, that is legit the reason because Deadpool two didn't do that well in, in theaters because it was slotted in a very tough, tough uh, market. So he's called the Merc with a mouth for a reason. So. That, but it's still, money, 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 it's, money. it's smart because yeah, some kids, some parents didn't take their kids to it because it's right or R. But if it's PG thirteen, right, hey, we can take them to that. Hey, must be the money. Uh, must be the money. Dosh, your thoughts on Deadpool two being PG thirteen? I think that's gonna be that's gonna major downplay him because then suddenly, if he either becomes part of the MCU or he suddenly gets that cut, suddenly parents are going to get the thought that in future Deadpool movies that are going to inevitably be rated R, they're going to start taking their children and we're going to start the cycle all over again with the first Deadpool movie when dumb parents didn't know not to take their kid to an R-rated superhero. Even Ryan Reynolds said something about it. Yeah, he even... Ex he responded to it by saying, well, since that you're taking kids to my R-rated movie, I'm going to tell your kid how babies are born. Okay, so, music now. Music, music. makes you lose control. Music makes you lose control. <laughs> Anyways, first order of business. A couple weeks ago, John, Spencer, Hal, Tony... A bunch of others and I went to see Fozzie and Adelita Sway at a free concert. Stone Broken. Stone Broken. Yeah. Other bands. That, Stone Broken. Those are only those are the only three bands that deserve to be mentioned. Yeah, Stone Broken too. They're pretty good. And so shout out to those. It was three. a real. Yeah, it it was definitely a good show. I did not become a fan of Adam. I I did not know much about Adelita Sway until I heard them that night and I loved it. And he loves it more than Shine Down. Bolt, no. No, 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 It's Fozzy that he loves more than Shine Down. Oh, yes, yes. Nothing, I'll never love anything 
more than Shinedown. Not even my girlfriend, wait. not even my wife. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, wait. You're not. Oh, wait. You're still single. So, ha! Ah! Anyways, what I was going to originally say was, regardless of music taste, we can all agree that it was cool to finally see Chris Jericho in the flesh. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. And then him bringing out that light up jacket during the show. That was perfect. That was great. Yeah. Um, talking about Huntington as well. Shinedown yesterday, they announced the winter leg of their Attention Attention World Tour. That means they're coming back to Huntington February 24th, 2019. With I'm Papa so, Roach. I'm, I'm throwing all of my money to get a ticket to that show because I've been waiting forever for them to come back to Huntington and I want to see it again because their shows are awesome. You know what? I'm I might actually consider going. I probably will go. Mic drop. I probably Girls, will go to touring it. on tour with them. Uh, Papa Roach and Asking Alexandria are touring with them. Yeah, I'm see, definitely Papa going. Papa Roach is the other reason. Yeah. Um. Other things Cut my life music. into pieces. This is my plastic fork. <laughs> um, <laughs> last good boy. There is a. There's also um, Five Finger Death Punch and um, Breaking Benjamin coming in December. Yeah, but I decided I'm not going to see Breaking Benjamin and. Uh, I am because it's right after my birthday. Plus, I'm not a fan of Five Finger Death Punch shows. Like I said, I saw their one where they the wrong side of heaven actually stole the show. And the righteous side of hell. I would Anyways. probably only go to see Breaking Benjamin. Yeah, a lot of people would. Bre- Breaking Benjamin's <laughs> Breaking Benjamin's okay in concert. The Benjamin's great. Whenever I whenever I saw them last, it was okay. I like I liked it, but it's not not the best that I've seen. I've been to a Five Finger Death Punch concert and that was crazy as oh so Connor are you trying to talk um, okay what nothing okay anyways um, last thing about music um I've gotten some software and tech in and I have started doing the official recording tracks for the concept work Faded and Stained which the stone is going to buy. Free. It's not going to be buy. It's basically going to be free. We're going to be filming the actual videos for it for the short film. And I got everything done for Strike Three. It's a raw track. What I'm trying to do now is put in effects and do the mixing while recording the instrumentals for Aries, Ophelia, and the self-titled song "Faded and Stained," which. I have the instrumental recorded for Aries. I still got to do the vocal track because it's been a rigorous process doing all this. Do you need, like, bass and drums for that? Well, I mean, it's an acoustic EP, but it would be pretty cool to have some other instrumentation so we could layer it and really make this something cool. But Strike 3 is the one track that is going to be different from the other three because it's raw and it's just angry. That's why I released uh, that track early whenever I got done mixing and recording it last night. Okay. Okay. Now, I might have Caleb help out with percussion if what I assume is correct that he's a percussionist because I see every now and then on Snapchat of him next to a drum set. Okay, so is that all for music? Uh, yeah, I'm really excited to get the recording for uh, Fade and Stain and Y'all Mixing Diamond. Suddenly, five, we, can, we still need to cast Ophelia for the videos because we got Hal starring as Aries, me starring as, of course, myself, Dash Ireland, and the narrator. But we still need Ophelia. I might change up the lyrics just a slight bit. So that if we can't find anyone to cast as Ophelia because the requirements for the character as described in the song are blonde hair and blue eyes, might change it to brown eyes and see if we can cast Tony. Does it all ju- just put in put a flyer out? What? Put a flyer out saying that you need somebody at Marshall, and you'll pay them like twenty bucks. 
I don't have that kind of money. You have the money. Hey, must be the money. Okay, so wrestling, right? So there's some. Ah, crap! Tonight's Tuesday. Yeah, and you not watching SmackDown? Whoops. I haven't watched Raw in the past couple weeks, Spencer. Well, um, from what I've seen on Instagram, is yeah. How Raw and SmackDown's on? actually been pretty good lately. Damn it! And I've been busy with work. Kane showed up last night. Nice. And Shawn Michaels took a took a bump. So, but wrestling related stuff. Um, we're gonna start with some indie stuff, then work our way into WWE. So, big news coming out of this week: Neville has made his return to wrestling this week. Um, he made his re- grand return to. Uh, Dragon Gra- Dr- Dragon Gate in Japan. Um, he is part of the faction Red, R E D Red, and he, he is jacked and is looking find looking great in the ring. Are you all happy that Neville is Neville slash Pack is back on the Indies and in wrestling again? As long as he's happy, uh, yeah. I'm happy for him. Oh yeah. I like that he's going back in wrestling. I mean, my opinion, WWE did kind of mistreat him a bit, but it's so good to see such a talented wrestler wrestling again, no matter what promotion. 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 Oh, he does have the Irish. You're talking about promotion. This is what happened whenever I was trying to record the vocal track for Aries, because I was trying out different ways of saying stuff or singing stuff, and it just didn't go right through my head, but yeah, I've been saying I'm sorry there, Aries. Hey. Oh, oh, believe it to me. There's purple, and it smells like a great bull shark. So, oh, when you talk to me like it charms. So the... Oh, don't you go there, laddie. I hit you with a potato. So the next. You can flip us the finger all you want. We will always interrupt you. <laughs> okay, the podcast is over. Bye. Reference back to Sunday game night. Okay, so. Um. There appears to be like a little bit of beef between Cody Rhodes and Juice Robertson, formerly known as CJ Parker in NXT. Get it done. So. When this on Monday, well Sunday for Mondays slash Sunday, it was uh, Cody Rhodes defeated Juice Robertson for the uh, IWGP United States Championship, becoming his fourth holder, and two out two and half of the people that have held that belt has been in Bullet Club. Side note, but um. The this is Cody's first belt in New Japan. He's also the NWA World Heavyweight Champion, so he's a dual champion. Um, when the and during the press conference, he was saying that um, Juice may was talking about how he is a child of Dusty, where he was in the performance center with Dusty. Before Dusty died. And Cody said pretty aggressively that I'm his actual effing kid. So, there might be, there seems to be a little bit of beef between uh, Juice and Cody. That, or, of course, he got permission to do that ahead of time so that way they can make a good storyline out of that. That, too, um, Going off of that interview also is that Cody uh, teased that he might be going back to WWE in January. So, there's that. How did he tease that? He's saying that somebody asked if 
in January, he and other people will be going to uh, WWE. And he said WWE's always been good to me and stuff. Um, and then, in the latest episode, being the Elite, they got a they start they him, the Young Bucks, um, Kenny, Adam Page, and um, Marty got um, all were all teasing about um, WWE and their countdown to when the the contract. Ends. So, it, they did say that no matter what, they were going to. If they, if they go to WWE, they're going to do it as a group. If they're not going to WWE, they're not doing it as a group. So, there is a possibility that they may be going back to WWE. They may be going to WWE, the Elite. Oh. Bullet Club, the Elite. Oh. That would be the biggest, biggest thing that happened quite a while so with that said with the rebirth the revolution of independent wrestling as of late do you think that if Cody Young Bucks Kenny Marty and Adam Page go to WWE if that um if that um revolution these this Momentum for the independent wrestling. Do you think that would die w- with their departing from the indies, or do you th- see it continuing on? I would think it would continue on. Think of it like this. Um, let me just use our country as an example. You had the founding fathers. These guys, we'll say Bullet Club's the founding fathers of the new age of independent wrestling. Someone else will take their place and will continue to make sure that their legacy lives on long after they've left the scene. So, the the concern is that no, that it was Cody and the Bullet Club that sewed out all in, which is the part of the whole. Uh, Revolution part. So they're saying that if Cody leaves, Young Bucks leave, that there won't be anybody that will have that mindset to set, take their take their take their spots. I'm sure they'll they'll trust that with someone. Hmm. Dash, any thoughts that you want to add? I mean, bringing. I really get the feeling that uh, Vince is going to give them the Finn Balor treatment, which they're going to have hype at the beginning, but then Vince is going to essentially kill that hype because he's going to, I mean, basically, he, he doesn't care what the fans like, he cares about what he likes. Okay. So, talking on the topic of going people going to WWE the ROH television champion has relinquished his belt and is heading to NXT um, Punishment Martinez if you don't know who he is Conan he is basically a Latino version of Baron Corbin that's that can actually wrestle So, thoughts on him go- coming to uh, NXT? Fresh blood. Do you... Just like Matt Riddle is. So, you don't see him being... getting, Having like an intro feud, then going straight into a the world title... NXT title scene? They probably want... They probably want Adam Cole to get there first, followed by Matt Riddle, and then maybe Punishment Martinez, unless they decide to bring in a secondary title like they've been planning, I think. They have a secondary title. They have two. The North American title? North American and the United Kingdom. I've heard that they might introduce an NXT TV title. 
that, that's just too much. That you can never have too much. It I mean, no for takeovers that, that would be too much. Division. Now hold on. Yeah. Something's not right there. Because in takeover. Now you're saying too much wrestling's a bad thing. No 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 no. no I'm saying too many titles. There, yeah. Bad thing. There, then it starts to feel like participation trophies. Well, yeah, but not, that, not would, that. That, 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 that would get more talent, some spotlight, and that not, would bring some more wrestling time. For not that, everyone. not that. It's takeover right now. It's five matches, and all five matches have is a title match. There's maybe one that is not a title match, but that is for like, that is designated for blood feuds or a pay per view worthy feud. If you Gargano Champa, Gargano Champa, and count and some others, but Thank if you add you a, another championship women's. belt, it's to be quite honest, I'm kind of wondering where Gargano Champa is going to go next. Uh, probably finally giving Gargano the title. Um, what's or Alistair Black coming in? Here Alistair Black, when Alistair Black will come back and reveal that it was Johnny Gargano that attacked him. Johnny will be a psychotic tweener because people will still root for him even though that they're going to be trying to portray him as heel because he has mentally snapped from his loss to uh, Champa over and over and probably at either um, take over whatever Wrestlemania is that probably in Brooklyn it would be, um, um... Do you have to go? No. What was that all about? Nothing. So, um... The, uh... Yeah, I got lost track there. Um, the... Probably be in TakeOver Brooklyn. Where he will get the belt. Because... Ain't that where they? It's basically all started. Well, it started there. Probably started in Chicago, but I think where the first pay for, their first tag tile shot was at Ch- Takeover Brooklyn. So it seems to be like a good place for the story to end. Then right. the loser will go on to uh, yeah, WWE. So. Um, Thursday, the people who have ordered the Deluxe Edition slash Collector's Edition will get their uh, copy of 2K19. I know Conan's not getting it, but are you getting it, Spencer? Probably not. If anything, I'll probably just ask for, like, regular uh, for Christmas. Well, yeah, I'm, although I'm at the... Re- the record version, not the. Yeah, I'll I'll probably get it. Okay. I have the collector's edition, so I'll get it on Thursday night. Lucky All right, guys, I got a question. Yes. Okay. Will All In ever come to DVD or Blu-ray? Probably. I would say it would. Cause uh, it's a question that's being asked me by uh, people that I talk to that aren't as involved with uh, wrestling as we are. And they've been asking me if All In will ever be on DVD. If it does, I'll definitely get it. Yeah, same. Um, that's all I, I really have for... Oh, there's one, there's one more thing. That yeah, one last topic. This one is WWE rated. It affects all three of us. So, the WWE Network is getting an update to it, where it's going to be tier-based, where there's going to be a free version of it, where you get past episode of Raw, SmackDown, some of the uh, some of the um, original TV shows and stuff that's on it. The five ninety-nine, you get Raw, Raw and SmackDown. Re- um, um, past episodes 
NXT Weekly. You don't get the pay-per-views. You don't get NXT TakeOver, though. Um, the 9.99 one, where you get... You basically will get what you we have right now. Then there's going to be a 15.99 one, where there's going to be more content to it, including independent wrestling. Fight Progress. Um, um, maybe TNA. Impact Library and WXW. So, thoughts on the update coming to uh, the WWE Network? I'm going to say mine really quick really because I'm desperate. probably on. Oh my gosh. Was it? I have, I'll say mine really quick because.